In this lesson, we'll be talking about opening and importing photos inside of Photoshop. And it wouldn't be Photoshop if we weren't going to be working with some photography at some point. So in this lesson, let's go through a few of the ways that we can begin to do just that. To start, let's go up here to the File menu and choose Open. And now I can navigate to where my photos are. So I have a folder here with three photos that I took recently from the park. I can select one of them or I can select all of them and then come down here and choose Open. By default, Photoshop will open these up into tabs. So you can see that we have three, four separate tabs here. One for our document, which I just clicked and dragged out of the tabs up here. And then we have our three additional photos. So I can drag these tabs out and move these around and place them however I want them. I can zoom out to make them smaller and I can reposition these however I want. Another way that I could view these though is by going to the window menu and choosing arrange. And this is something I touched on briefly earlier in the section where we went over the menus. You can actually choose the appearance of these different documents to anything you want basically once you have them all open here. And it's just going to allow you to see all of the different photos or documents at the same time. I can press the tab key here to hide my panels in my custom workspace so that I can see all of these better. And at any point in time, I can return to the window menu and choose arrange, consolidate all to tabs. And that's going to basically set them back up as they were here before. So again, I can click and drag any of these tabs out, just like the toolbars and the panels to dock them freely around the interface. And if I press the tab key, I can hide or reveal those tabs. Now that I have these photos open in Photoshop, how can I actually get them into the document? Well, I can just click and drag them from the main file over here into the new file that I wanna bring it into. And when I do that, you'll see that it's just brought in layer one. And you can probably tell already, but this image is way too zoomed in for our blank document here because our document, if I go to image, image size, is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, which in inches is about 6.4 inches wide wide by 3.6 inches tall, a resolution of 300 dpi. But if I click on the original photo and go to image, image size, you'll see that it's much larger, right? It's 72 dpi, but look at the size here. The pixels are 6240 by 4160, which is 86 inches by 57.778 inches. So quite a difference there in terms of the size. But something that I can do here with a photo, which is pretty nice, is I can resample it. So if I uncheck this box for a moment and change the resolution from 72 to 300, you'll see that it's actually decreased the overall size of our photo. It's now about 20 inches by 13. And if I click resample and check off this box here that says preserve details and now click OK. Now, once I make those changes, the image itself will look more or less the same. All I've done there is basically resize the image to enhance the quality a little bit. And that's something that you can do if you have a really large file that may be a lower res file. You can scale it down in dimensions and that will allow you to get a little bit more quality out of the image. Let's have a look at another way that I could bring my photo over here into my document, though. If I have a photo open, let's grab a different one. Maybe we'll grab the ducks here. Just place this over to the side and scale it down a little bit. Let's say I wanna bring this into my document. Well, another way I can do that is by control clicking on this background layer and choosing duplicate layer. Now we have an option up here that just says duplicate background as, and this will allow you to enter a custom name for this duplicate of that layer. And you also have the option to choose the destination. So at the moment, it's the same as our document. Notice the name here matches the file name here at the top of the photo. But if I click on this arrow, it will allow me to choose a different destination like my empty untitled one file here. So let's say I click that and then click OK. It's also going to bring my photo here into the new document. And you'll notice that it gave it the name that we chose as well, which was just background copy, but you could make that anything you want. So those are a few different ways that you could open a photo, change the view of all the images in these different windows and tabs. And you also learned a few ways to get that photo into a new document, as well as how to get a little bit more quality out of it. Now, one last thing I want to touch on here is the difference between opening a photo and bringing it into a document versus importing a photo and bringing it into a document. I'm going to delete this background layer. And this is our just empty blank untitled file right now. But if I return to the file menu and choose place embedded, I can now navigate to the photo. So let's grab the second photo here. And it's going to place this right within my document here, all the way to the edges as best as it can. So if I press return on the keyboard and just apply those changes, you'll see that our image is basically fit to the height of our document, but it doesn't quite fill out the sides. So what's interesting about this is when I opened the other photos and just brought them in or duplicated them, it didn't fit nicely like this inside of the window. 
Another difference here is that it didn't come in with the file name. If you remember, it said background as instead of the name of our actual file. And there's another thing I want to point out here, and that's that this is a smart object. Now, we haven't got on smart objects too much yet, but there are some amazing benefits to working with smart objects over raster-based layers and images. The main thing that I want you to remember here is that if you open a photo and just drag it in here, it's not going to fit nicely to the size of your document like this, and it won't come in with the file name. And also the added benefit of smart objects really is pretty great when it comes to Photoshop and working with photos. So I just wanted to show you how you can import photos by going to file place embedded so that you have a few different ways that you can open photos to get started.